Our bodies are remarkable. The various processes that occur within us maintain our internal conditions, preserving us from the threat of imbalance and deterioration. There are other threats, however, that come from outside our bodies. This video will explain how antibiotics help protect us, but also why they should be used as a last resort against some of these external threats. Some of these external threats are pathogens, microorganisms that attack our bodies from within. One type of pathogen is bacteria. Independent unicellular organisms about a tenth of the size of a human cell. Not all bacteria are bad, but the ones we classify as pathogenic are the ones that do harm us, eliciting responses from our bodies which cause fever and other symptoms depending on where the infection occurs. In order to fight bacteria, your body has specialized defense cells known as white blood cells, or leukocytes. One type of leukocyte is known as the macrophage. They defend by simply consuming and digesting bacteria. Sometimes, however, more robust bacterial infections can become too much for the body to handle. Many years ago, this would likely have been fatal. Luckily, we now have medicines like antibiotics that either kill bacteria or inhibit their growth. These are called bactericidal and bacteriostatic antibiotics, respectively. Some of the first antibiotics were a class of drugs known as beta-lactams, such as penicillin and its various subtypes. Due to the strain on their lactam rings, these antibiotics can bind to specific bacterial proteins, disabling them. These proteins are responsible for maintaining the outer layer of bacteria, the cell wall. If these maintenance proteins are disabled, the cell wall will rupture, killing the bacterium. However, there are risks associated with antibiotic use. There are also friendly bacteria that naturally live within us, with whom we have a symbiotic relationship. We provide their sanctuary, and they produce essential nutrients and protect us against pathogens. Antibiotics, unfortunately, are just as deadly to these helpful bacteria as they are to the pathogenic ones. Viruses are another type of even smaller pathogen. They are essentially DNA and a few proteins enveloped within a viral capsule. They may produce symptoms that are similar to those caused by bacterial pathogens. However, their structure makes them impervious to the effects of antibiotics. Nowadays, we as patients always expect to be treated with antibiotics for symptoms that may, in many cases, actually be due to viral infection. Keep in mind, antibiotics do not work against viruses. Inappropriate use of antibiotics for viral infections will kill the essential bacteria, potentially making us more susceptible to pathogens. Bacteria can randomly mutate to become resistant to antibiotics. If we miss doses or do not complete the antibiotic course, we create an opportunity for resistant pathogens to replicate and then dominate. We can, however, develop new, stronger antibiotics. For example, cephalosporins, which are a subgroup of beta-lactams that can overcome some antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Developing these new drugs, however, takes time and money, and in order to allow for enough time, we must minimize the possibility of more resistant bacteria appearing. Except, some antibiotic-resistant bacteria already exist, such as MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. These bacteria resistant to the new and more powerful drugs are known as superbugs. If such a generation of bacteria were to spread, they could possibly become an untreatable and unstoppable global force. If we cannot treat such bacterial infections, we may regress to a time when a simple cut meant death. So what can we do? We need to make available tests to differentiate between viral and bacterial infections to avoid treating viral infections with antibiotics. We need to scale up antibiotic susceptibility testing to ensure that the prescribed antibiotic is effective against bacteria causing the infection. We need to listen to our doctor's advice and should only take antibiotics at their suggestion. We need to be responsible and use antibiotics as prescribed for the entire length of the course to avoid development of drug resistance. We need to raise awareness about the risks of inappropriate antibiotic use. And we need to vigorously support research to battle antibiotic resistance if we are to protect ourselves and those around us.